Hello, this is Dr. Viv. In this video, we shall solve a concrete problem. So I bill it as a method for determining the kinetic friction coefficient. What we have is a pendulum that's released at a 90 degree angle. It swings, hits this block, and sends this block moving to the right. Meanwhile, the pendulum itself bounces back to some final angle which I call theta. In the problem statement, I give some values. Theta is 60 degrees, the pendulum mass is m, while the mass of the block is two times the pendulum mass, or 2m. I don't believe I have said that anywhere, so maybe I should say that this is mass 2m here. We have to determine the change in the kinetic energy after collision as well as mu sub k. Now the thing about this problem, the interesting fact about this problem is actually there are two sources of energy loss. One is, or, or gain, we don't know yet if energy is lost or gained during this collision, we'll find out at the end. But there's some energy that's probably not conserved over here. And then of course the friction, um, the frictional patch, which is the entire length of this L2, uh, also robs the system of energy. So energy conservation certainly cannot be used as a um, single tool. You can use it when energy is conserved. For example, the pendulum swinging from here up to there, you can use energy. Um, so for small things like that. So I've labeled some of the phases. Phase one is when the pendulum is released and then phase two is when it comes down with some initial speed which I call V2. Then phase three is when that uh, rebounds and goes back to this position 3 and that one goes forward to position 4. Let us uh, investigate each of these in turn. So mechanical energy is certainly conserved when the pendulum swings down. So I'll write TME at 1 must be equal to the total mechanical energy at this position 2 just before impact. Well the equation for that is uh, written as follows. The potential energy lost is just mgl1 and that will be equal to the kinetic energy gained which is 1 half m uh, v2 squared. Cancelling out the m's and multiplying by 2 and taking the square root I immediately get that v2 is the square root of 2gl1. Okay, that's phase one of the problem. The second phase of the problem is um, we want also to address what happens when it bounces back. So let's call the speed when it bounces back V2 prime. We don't know what it is yet, but we'll eventually find that out too. Uh, well, that let's complete the process, the pendulum business. So TME at two, uh, we'll call this two prime, is equal to TME at three primes. Uh, so I'll just say here, right here, my convention for primes means after collision. Unprimed quantities are before the collision. Now, if we write the equation for that, um, keeping in mind that this height is the full height minus the height cosine theta, so this is going to be L1 minus L1 cosine theta. Okay, so I'm going to get one half the kinetic energy at this point. Uh, by the way, I've taken the potential energy at the bottommost point to be zero in even writing that equation there. So I'll write it somewhere here UG equals zero. Uh, so I'll get one half m uh, v2 prime squared should be equal to mgl1 times 1 minus cosine theta. Actually, let me go ahead and put the cosine theta here. It's cosine of 60 degrees according to the problem statement. So cosine 60 is half. You can see why I chose that nice value. So that's going to be mgl1 1 minus a half, which is a half. So when I solve for this, the halves cancel on both sides, m1 cancels on both sides, so v2 prime is just going to be the square root of g 
L1. Well, that makes sense. Square root of 2 GL1 would have sent it to 90 degrees, but square root of GL1 only sends it to 60 degrees. So far, so good. Now, we have to still use momentum conservation. Now, first of all, is momentum even conserved? You may think, well, if there's friction, how is momentum conserved? Well, here's the thing. Collisions take a very short time of the order of 30 milliseconds. In 30 milliseconds, this is not going any place. So for that duration of the collision, you can assume that there is no external force and that justifies momentum conservation. So item 3, the sum of the initial momentum, Pi, is equal to the sum of the final momentum, Pf. Let's write down that equation. The uh, convention I'm going to use is right is positive, left is negative. So I'm going to get plus m v2. The pendulum is coming here with a speed v2. And then rebounding with the speed negative v2 prime, because it's moving in the, to the left. So that's negative m v2 prime. And then this one, this block is 2m. The mass is 2m times the speed, initial speed just after collision, which is v3 prime. Remember that after collision are primed quantities. So this al allows us to solve for um, uh, v3 prime. So I'm going to get v3 prime. So what's going to happen is uh, this mv2 prime is going to combine here. So I'm going to uh, get 2m times uh, v3 prime is equal to m times uh, v2 plus v2 prime. Observe that v2 and v2 prime I know from the pendulum data. So I can just write down those results. Um, that's a square root of 2 and that's a 1 times the root gl, gl1. The m can cancel out and then I can bring the 2 downstairs. So I'm going to get from this v3 prime is equal to root 2 plus 1 over 2 root gl1. So uh, that is a um, great result right there. It's not our final result, but I feel like boxing some of these so we don't lose track of all the results that's popping out each time we write an equation. All right. Uh, with that, uh, now for the next phase. The next phase of the problem is what happens there. Well, um, there are actually two viewpoints. Uh, the first viewpoint is the one that you already know. So we'll go with that. Uh, I'll talk about the last, the alternative viewpoint later when we finish the problem. So the, uh, the standard viewpoint is that we're going to use the work done by the non-conservative force is the change in the kinetic energy. There is no change in potential energy here. It's just completely gone into uh, stopping the particle. Uh, WNC is the work done by friction, which is the force of friction uh, times the displacement times cosine of 180 degrees. A cosine of 180 degrees is going to give me the negative sign. The force of friction is just the coefficient of friction times the normal force, which is just uh, 2m times g. The mass is 2m and g is gravity. So that's the normal force times the friction force times the displacement, L2. And that's equal to the change in the kinetic energy. The final kinetic energy is 0, and the initial is 1 half times 2m times v3 prime squared. So, you know, one by one, like uh, ducks in a row, uh, it's just falling uh, to our attack. And now the minus signs cancel out. The two m's actually cancel out on both sides. So I'll take that out. And I just end up getting uh, mu sub k, which is our objective here is going to be a v3 prime squared over 2gl2. And now let's substitute. v3 prime squared is sitting right there. So um, it's root 2 plus 1 over 2, the whole thing squared, times gl1. The square root disappears when you square that. And downstairs I have 2gl2. So ob observe that the planet doesn't matter. The G cancels out. Now L1 and L2 are 
generally different and my problem statement says that L2 is 5 L1. All right, let's use that. So that gives me root 2 plus 1 squared over 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 and then L2 is 5 L1 so that's going to be 5 L1 and the numerator I have an L1 so L1's cancel out and so that's your coefficient of friction it's uh, root 2 plus 1 if I expand that out I can expand it if I want to but uh, I'm not too interested in calculating these numbers I'll just write it like that and uh, uh, you can feel free to run it in your calculator if necessary if you feel inspired to do it but uh, to me this looks like a pretty good answer the percentage change in energy after collision is simply uh, found by computing the kinetic energy before and after collision so let's do the fifth item um, percentage uh, ke change the final kinetic energy is going to be the sum of the kinetic energy of this and that and then the initial one is just going to be equal to uh, the one of the pendulums uh, so that's uh, the, the calculations we're going to do uh, so I'm going to get one half the pendulums mass times the pendulums final speed squared plus one half times the blocks mass times the blocks final speed which is v3 prime squared uh, let's write this out so it's going to be one half m times v2 prime squared plus one half times 2m v3 prime squared I think it's fairly clear that the kinetic energy is more at the end. Um, I, I just want to make sure that you can see that. So what I'll do is I'll write this as one half m times the initial kinetic energy is going to be one half m times uh, v2 squared. So I'll write this as one half m times two uh, g l1, and then that's going to be one half because I have to compensate for the two and uh, here I've taken two G L1 and ha M and a half outside so I've taken half I've taken the two M I've taken G L1 so I'm left with root two plus one over two squared let's calculate this I don't know if it's going to be bigger than one or not so it's uh, worth looking at. So it's going to be 1 half plus root 2 plus 1. If I square it, I'm going to get 2 plus 1 plus 2 root 2 divided by 4. And that's the initial kinetic energy, Ki, times uh, one, this is half plus 3 quarters. Uh, so bingo, we are, we are done. Uh, it's going to be bigger. Plus root 2 by uh, 2. Half plus 3 quarters is bigger than 1. So we have found that the kinetic energy final is actually bigger than the kinetic energy initial. Such collisions are known as super elastic collisions. When I chose the numbers, I was um, pretty sure this would happen. I'm glad it turned out that way. It just means that the final energy is bigger than the initial energy. How is that even possible, you may be wondering you have to assume there is some sort of uh, additional source of energy like for example the pendulum uh, is made of some squishy springy material and so when it hits the um, block let's say when it contacts the block some spring energy is released by the system some internal energy source is required the other point of view that I talked about uh, for item number four is that you can consider the process of going over the floor as a long drawn out slow collision that's actually a pretty uh, fascinating viewpoint so I'm going to lengthen the video by a couple minutes to talk about that so um, for alternative is to consider it as another slow collision so the impulse 
the frictional impulse, which would be the force of friction, which we know what it is, times the time taken for the collision, delta t call, well, that is equal to the change in the momentum. The final momentum is zero, and the initial momentum is um, 2m times v3 prime. Well, what does that uh, even give us? That actually gives us a time of collision. So this tells us that um, mu kinetic times 2mg times L2 is equal to uh, the force of friction is, uh, is negative, so that negative sign comes there, is equal to negative 2m times uh, v3 prime. And that's going to be root 2 plus 1 over 2 uh, times root g l1. Uh, this is times delta t call. I'll call that t call instead of delta t call. So this actually gives us the time it, it takes to slide, because the time for sliding is the same as the time of collision. I would like you to actually check that this time for sliding is what you would expect to get using the kinematical equations. In particular, the kinematical equations uh, you would use is the kinematical equation 1x. If you use that, you will find that you get the same time of sliding as you get uh, with t call from here, um, with mu k being just mu k. So that's for you to try.